Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today I wanted to talk about speed and movement, uh, turn rate on your ship, and why that's important, and how to uh, to achieve uh, good speeds and turn rates that are readily available to you all the time. Uh, before I start, though, I did want to say a big thank you to the the overall community for all the support uh, you guys have been giving me. Uh, we hit uh, a thousand subs today on YouTube, and uh, I just want to say that I really appreciate that and thank you very much. Um, I also wanted to remind everybody that we do have a giveaway going in the Discord server, uh, so if you want to hop over there and check that out, um, everybody is um, more than welcome to to enter that. We're giving away a Intel. Uh, Kelvin Timeline Dread, and uh, the winner for that will be pulled a week from this Monday. Uh, it is PC only, um, and if you are so inclined, go ahead and jump on over there and enter into that. Uh, if you like the content that I'm putting out, uh, I would uh, greatly appreciate a sub. Drop down, hit the button, and ring the bell. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about uh, movement overall. Um, I, I see a lot of complaints, really, that are focused towards... You know, high DPS players where a player will get into a map and they will basically complain that they they get there and everything's dead. And that um, it's power creep and there's just too much DPS. And there's certainly something to be said for, for that, power creep and those kinds of things. It is somewhat of an issue. I mean, depending on, you know, if you're a casual player and you're dropping into TFOs with people that are min-maxing and those kinds of things. Um, so I do understand that, and I'm not dismissing it, but the problem is less of the fact that they're getting there and there was too much you know, damage output by the other team members, and so everything's dead. The problem is, is that they're getting there late. And so if you are having this issue and you are able to get there at the same time, things are still going to die, but you are going to be able to put hits in and get damage and be contributing to the team. Um and it's important to also be able to then recover those abilities to move fast again and continue to keep up with the team. And this is important regardless of the role you're playing. If you're the tank, you need to stay with the guys doing the DPS or the Psy um, characters on the team. If you're science, you need to you know, be able to keep up. Everyone needs to move as a group and, and work as a team. Um, regardless of if it's, you know, whether it's a you know, private team or you're just pug running it. Um, having that ability to get around the map quickly is going to solve a lot of those problems where you don't have to worry about getting places and everything being dead. So again, you know, I just want to emphasize it's not so much that the other people on the team are just doing so much damage and so everything's dead and you're not being able to get to shoot at it. The issue is that you're not there when everybody else is getting there in order to be putting shots in and, and using abilities. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to kind of go through that cause I get that comment a lot and, uh, you know, I, and I will admit, I mean, you know, even if you do get there quick and you're still working on your build, you're a casual player with other, you know, team members, uh, you know, pug runs, people that are putting out massive amounts of damage, you may not have the kind of time to maybe use all the abilities or the clickies that you wanted to, um, because those things are going down so so fast but the, the 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 key is first you need to be there with the rest of the team so let's uh let's take a look at that i have the um the vaudoir juggernaut up this is one of the worst turning um worst sliding ships in the game this thing will slide off the edge of the map in an instance um, and i'm going to use this ship so we can demonstrate you know what you can do in terms of you know, turning, going fast, and being able to stop yourself in position. Um, so the other part, you know, turn rate, especially if you're running cannon builds or if you're running a beam overload build, maybe with dual beam banks, the way your ship is pointing and your ability to reorientate that ship is extremely important. And so being able to turn quickly is is huge. Um, if you're running, you know, a cannon scatter volley build or, you know, anything that's basically forward firing, if you're unable to reposition quickly when you want to, you're, you're going to lose out on being able to contribute quite a bit there until you're able to get into the proper position. So those are really the, the two kind of main things that we need to look at. So getting from A to B, that speed and having that speed available to you when you want it and being able to then position your ship once you are where you want to be so that you can most effectively you know, use your build on that target. 
And, you know, that could even be if you're a broadsider, um, you need to be broadside. And if you're not, you'll need to reposition yourself as quickly as possible so you can get those rear or front uh, beam banks going, uh, depending on your position when you showed up. Um, so let's take a look at um, how I go about doing doing this. And then what I'm going to do is I will uh, I'll do a ISA run. Um, I probably I, I may not show the whole thing, but it, it's a good one where you know we're moving through it quick. It's point A to point B. There's a lot of there's not a lot of downtime, so I think it's the best place to really kind of demonstrate how you can keep these abilities up. And I'll kind of talk through it as we're doing it, and then I'll show you some some little tricks that I use in order to keep my ship from you know sliding off the map. Okay, um, so the first thing let's talk about, and I think probably the most important. So when I start a new tune, first thing I do when I can start opening Phoenix uh, boxes is I'm going to grab a duty officer, and I'll show you where it is here in in the Phoenix tokens. It is a rare, so it's not a super hard one to get, and it is the Emergency Con hologram. And what this guy does is he will give your evasive maneuvers basically 100% cooldown um, when you activate emergency power to weapons. Um, I'm sorry, to engines. I was thinking weapons because we're going to have to consider that part as well. Um, so basically, you use emergency power to weapons. And that runs for, you know, the 8-9 seconds there that it does. And I find I have to wait a couple seconds. So it's on cooldown. I'm waiting a couple seconds, and I'm going to go emergency power to engines. And bam, two, one, recharged, ready to use again. The reason I said emergency power to weapons, I was thinking ahead of myself, is that it shares a cooldown with emergency power to weapons. So you will need to kind of pay attention to that when when you're using it or when you need to be able to you know use this to get this up again. This is going to be on cooldown or vice versa. So I use a spam bar, so I have to be kind of careful where I know things are going to go down quick, you know, say the team I'm with does a, a ton of damage, I know that, and I know I'm going to need to be able to move quick. Sometimes I'll, f I'll ease up off my spam bar and, and I'll wait so I can click the emergency powered engines and then wait for the, the shared cooldown, because the shared cooldown is not as long as the, the overall cooldown of, of this. So it drops it to 15 seconds uh, using the cooldown abilities. Uh, that actually won't cool it down any farther because 50% of the uh, stock cooldown is the most you can go. So it puts it on for that 15 seconds. So uh, just a side note, you will need to kind of manage these two because they do share a cooldown. So I can take off quickly, get from A to B, get there, pop emergency powered engines, and this has been reset and it's ready to use again. Uh, which is a, a very, very nice um, ability to be able to use to have that on hand when you're needing to move around the map quickly. Um, so that's the first thing I get. It's the easiest thing to get. Um, you know, emergency powered engines you can get from the vendor. It basically costs nothing. And that duty officer from the Phoenix pack is um, extremely easy to get. Um, so getting a rare Phoenix token is, is very easy. I've, I've done a video on where to get those, but I'll just show you if you go into the Dilithium store, you can purchase those in here. So you can buy one or you can buy 10 is the best bang for buck. I'll just grab one just so I show you. And if you buy 10, chances are you're going to at least get one. So there's one right there and I could buy it with, with that. Um, so that's where you get that duty officer. And that is, again, for cooling down your uh, evasive maneuvers. Huge. Easy to get. I get it as soon as duty officers are available to me on a new tune. Uh, next item is going to be the competitive engines. These are, I don't want to say harder to get, but they take a little bit more work. Um, so this comes from the competitive rep. And what it allows, I'll show you the different flavors. There's three different flavors, but let's start with what it does. Um, so if you look at the tooltip on this, and let me see, this might be easier. Here we go. Um, so anytime I activate a tactical firing mode, um, it's going to give me 350% flight speed for five seconds, 350 turn rate for five seconds. Uh, gives me some defense rating. That's basically because I'm moving faster and 10% increased recharge speed for tactical officers, which is also a very nice thing. Um, and so I generally use this not so much for getting from A to B. L let's say I'm in a position where I'm, I'm waiting a few seconds to get this to cool down. I might pop one of my firing modes to give me a little bit of forward boost just to buy me a little bit of extra time. Then I'm able to refresh emergency are using emergency power to engines i'm um, able to uh, refresh evasive maneuvers and so it's a little stopgap for that but more importantly let's start turning the ship here 
And I got the wormhole open so we can get a little bit of perspective. So turning the ship, I'm going to click one, and that starts to speed up quite a bit. If I'm moving, that actually speeds up a whole lot compared to what it does when it's not. So let's let that run out. And you can see this thing does not move super quickly. But when you activate that firing mode, that turn rate becomes much, much better. Let's take a look at the, the other options for that. And basically, I have the tactical version, there's a science version, and there is an engineering version. So uh, activating engineering abilities or activating uh, science abilities is going to give you that proc and give you the cooldown that is... Um, like the, the version you got. So it'll give you the cooldown on engineering if it's the engineering version. Um, if you are on the um, science one, it's going to give you the cooldown for the science one. So let's take a look at this here. Which one is this? This one's for science. Um, so and it gives you the same, the same proc, basically, or the same function of that flight turn rate. The only thing that changes is that additional cooldown you can get uh, for the 10 seconds for whatever kind of ability you got the engine for so you got three different choices you can get i own i think i own two no i can get multiple so yeah so here is the uh this one's the tactical one so this is the prevailing innovative impulse engine and to be honest i'm so used to using this on most of my tunes even on my science characters i'll use it because i'll most likely have a torpedo um if you're running like one of those non kind of weapon build science ones you probably want to go with the science ability um I also, on a lot of my builds, not this particular one, but I'll run these firing modes on my bar. And so that's something you got to kind of get used to is that it'll just be boosting it. And I'm not really doing it on purpose. Um, it's just happening. And I've just gotten used to be able to fly that way where I get this boost suddenly and I'm able to cope with that. But it does take some getting used to. Um, the other thing that I'll do is, um, like on my free-to-play character right now, I'm running... Um, Oh, what is it? It's beam overload, and um, I have torpedoes on it. And the ship that I'm in, I'm trying to remember what it is, but it had an extra tactical s slot in the uh, uh, lieutenant slot, and I didn't really have anything for it, so I went ahead and did scatter volley one. I don't have any cannons on it, but basically it turns it into another turn rate clicky and you know minor speed boost clicky. So you can use that even if you don't have the weapons and you want to add some extra movement onto um onto your bar there some extra uh, ability to be able to move um so that's the innovative engine um so that's huge um i, I just i love having that it, it just it, it makes such a big difference and like i said most of the time it's in the spam bar so it's just constantly kind of happening um so i'm able to move around and turn quite a bit um the last thing is going to be the surplus is this the surplus this is Deuterium. So what this does is it does a similar thing to the comp engine. Um, so if I'm moving, let's go up to full speed here and let's get rid of this so it's out of our way. Uh, so there's the wormhole. I'm turning and I click it. It gives me a nice boost to turn rate and speed uh, for a few extra seconds than what the comp engine would do. So this is a separate clicky that you can get uh, to add your bar, it's a consumable. You can craft it, and uh, we'll jump over and I'll show you where to get that from. Um, but that will allow you to, to move faster as well, and it doesn't share a cooldown with anything else. Uh, so as of right now, on this particular ship, I have evasive maneuvers. I have a way to cool that down quickly, which also gives me a little bit of extra speed. I have the deuterium, uh, which gives me flight speed and turn rate. And then I have all of my firing modes that give me the ability to speed up and, and turn quickly. Um, so it's it's just huge, the amount uh, of things that you have here where I didn't even have to give anything up. Um, the only thing I'm slotting that, let's say, I wouldn't normally slot if, if you know I wasn't focusing on speed is emergency-powered engines. Um, but it doesn't matter which version of it it is. So in the instant slot, that's not really a big deal on most builds. Granted, sometimes that, that can kind of change. For me, this is a must-have. I need to be able to move fast and get around, so I always make sure this is worked into it. Um, but aside from that, you're not really giving anything else up because you have you, you need firing modes. Uh, this stuff doesn't share a cooldown. You can craft it. It goes in your 
device slot. Um, the ship comes built in, obviously everyone's captain's ability with evasive maneuver. Um, so with this suite of stuff here, you're going to be able to, you know, get around the map position and do all the things that, that you need to do. Uh, so let's hop over to uh, where you can get this from. So the way that this works is there's a little mission you do. You uh, go to this planet. I can't remember what it's called. I'll pull it up when we go over there. And uh, you're going to accept the mission, pick it up, and then you'll go into the uh, the system. You fight off some Cardassians. It's over. You get rewarded like six, I think it's three or four of these. Um, and that unlocks the ability there to craft it going forward. So you don't have to go back. They changed that probably about a year ago or so. Uh, you used to have to go there daily. It had a 24-hour cooldown or a 20-hour cooldown. It was a nightmare because you had to go by there all the time in order to pick this stuff up. You can't sell it. You can't trade it. Um, so when they added it to the crafting system, uh, it was just amazing because now you can just craft it and you can build it up and keep a good amount of it in your inventory there. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop over there and I'll show you where to pick that up and then we'll do uh, a quick run and uh, I'll kind of talk through that and then also show you some piloting tricks that really help me in terms of you know sliding around. Okay, we are at the Alhenna system. This is where we're gonna come to get our deuterium surplus. Um, this is gonna allow us to have the clicky for the deuterium burn, um, which gives us that extra light speed and turn rate. Um, so once you get down here, there'll be a mission, and let me fix my screen so you can see it here. There'll be a mission down here on the bottom And uh, incoming distress signal is what it'll say. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna say defend contractor. So we've picked it up and we're gonna accept it. So it's in progress. Click out of that screen. And then down here, we're gonna respond to the distress signal. And this is gonna take us in. All right, so we've entered the map here. Um, so what's going to happen is some Cardassian ships are going to uh, enter the system, uh, a couple different waves, and we're going to defeat them. And then we'll be able to approach each of these little satellite stations, and they're going to transfer us some of that deuterium that we can use. Um, once we complete that and leave, then we won't ever have to come here again. Uh, you can go repeat the mission. So if, say, you didn't have enough crafting supplies to, to make them in the crafting system, you could come here and pick up a couple extra on a daily basis. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate, I, I think on this map, we'll see if we can demonstrate some of what we do or what I do in order to get out of power slide. So before I accept it and they start coming in, let me just talk through that real quick. So what I do is if I take off at full speed and let's just do it here so we can see so I'm at full speed and I get to where I'm going and I stop and I turn and we're just sliding. We're sliding and we're sliding and you can find yourself way out of position, especially if you were using full impulse and then you came out of that and and clicked invasive maneuvers or something like that. Um, you're going to have a real problem. So what what? What the trick is, and let me move that over and we'll start clicking it. What the trick is, is that when we take off and we get into position, if you can turn your ship, so power slide it into the position you want as as you're you're coming into the area you're trying, trying to set up in, um, what you're going to do is go zero speed, go into the slide, and then tap your ship into reverse. This has to happen while evasive maneuver is still up. Or if you activate one of your other speed boosts, it'll do the same thing. But essentially, that power slide that we just did, if I had immediately tapped my R button to zero out my speed and then my Q button to put me into reverse, it would instantly stop that, that slide. Um, so let, let's try that here. So let's get ramped all the way up to full speed and evasive maneuvers. Okay, we're moving. And we just stopped, backed up, and it just stopped that slide completely. Um, and you can do that with any of these other boosts will take you out of it. So if you go you know, shooting across the map to an area, you're moving very fast. Evasive Maneuvers is running, but it ends right before you're getting to where you need to be. If you click one of these other speed boosts, 
kill the engines, turn the ship, and then tap it into reverse, um, that'll take you out of that slide as well. So even with a huge, you know, large ship like this that has a lot of inertia, um, you can move around the map quickly, you can stop it and get out of those those long power slides without having to use like Cannoneer or one of those those traits. Um, it, it's a real bummer if you can master the, this little technique uh, that'll save you a whole space trait slot that can be used for something else um, that's going to be, I don't want to say more useful because it is useful to stop you from sliding around because if you slide out of position then you know anything else on your build doesn't matter because you're out of position. Um, but if you can master you know the technique of getting out of that power slide then you won't need that and you can free that spot up for something else. So let's go ahead and get these guys coming in here. So, and I'm going to kind of move around flat fast here so we can so pull right out of that power slide. Tapped my beam overload, get a good turn so I can move towards this guy in range here. And I think the next ones are coming over here. Okay, my evasive maneuver is now off cooldown. I think that was it. Uh, there used to be more bad guys here. That's kind of weird. There he is, okay. All right, so we're gonna go evasive maneuver, fly towards this guy, let's pop some of our firing modes. We're gonna stop the ship, reverse, that'll stop me right out of the slide. Let's speed back up here so we can get to it. Right now, almost everything is on cooldown. And this is something I just kind of jumped into, so you are still gonna, whoa. Okay. <laughs> that was interesting. And unfortunately, I can't record this section again until tomorrow, so um, I most likely will leave, leave it, but it looks like we're having a little bit of server lag there. All right, and we should have one more group. So when you're playing in TFOs that you normally play in and you know where waves are coming in, you can work out your, you know, timing out which abilities you want to use when, um, and you'll have a better, you know, kind of prearranged plan than just dropping into something like this. Um, so if you haven't planned that out, you definitely could still find yourself in a position where, you know, you don't have some of these abilities available to you. Sometimes I'll misclick things in a TFO and things are on cooldown right when I need them. And that's just going to happen. And that's just a part of, you know, obviously playing the game and practicing and getting better with, uh, you know, with all of your abilities. Um, but by having, you know, these three items, the duty officer we discussed, the competitive engine, um, and then the uh, deuterium surplus, uh, you have quite a bit available to you to go fast all the time. Um, so once you complete um, those couple waves, you're going to come over to each one of these. We'll just run through this here real quick, and we're going to transport that over. Uh, we just have to go to these other two. Looks like we end up with a total of three. This was a real bummer um, when you couldn't craft it. Because three is not very much. I'll, I'll use at least one a run in most cases. Swing the ship around, especially in a big ship like this. So, and I'm demonstrating this on this huge-ass boat uh, that doesn't turn good. If you get into some of your smaller ships or your pilot ships, um, it can get pretty, pretty wild trying to pilot that around, and it takes a lot of practice. But if you can master it, um, you're just you're going to beat everybody. So, you know, even if you're still working on you know getting getting your build, um, you know, the performance up on it, putting out a lot of damage, you might find that you're actually in some of these smaller ships beating some of these other people to the areas of the map and being able to get a lot more damage in while they're getting over to you. Even though when they show up, they start you know really putting the damage in, um, you'll have a much better, you know, opportunity to, uh, to share in those, those hit points that the enemy has to offer. Um, so, you know, even in a ship like this, I mean, I'm going to click everything, you know, I mean, you can really get these things turning. I mean, this is a juggernaut and it's turning a very small radius here, which is kind of ridiculous. So why don't we go ahead and queue up for an ISA? Um, we'll just go ahead and, and just run through it. Um, that's a map, obviously, I've played a ton and uh, have planned out these button clicks, and, and we'll just kind of talk through it as, as we're going through. 
All right, let's go ahead and queue up for this. I won't be able to buff my ship up, but that's okay. These have been popping pretty, pretty quick tonight, so. Before we go into the ISA, one last thing or two last things we need to touch on real quick. One is going to be your power settings for your engines. Um, I run, if you're running any kind of energy build, um, your weapon should be maxed. I also then put everything else into my engines. I want to do damage and I want to get there quickly. It's kind of how I look at it. Um, shields, unfortunately, in the game are not very useful. And it doesn't matter if you're going against the Borg or anybody else. Um, and I've had people tell me, well, you know, that's that's not how it should be. And that's not how, you know, the movies and the shows are. And I agree with them 100 um, percent. But that's how the game is. And so if you're going to put a bunch of power into your shields or points into your shields and your skill tree, you're wasting them. And I, I'm bummed out that's not the case. I mean, we know in the show when the, when the shields are down, then uh, things were looking pretty bad. Uh, but in the game, that is, uh, that's just not the way it is. So, uh, auxiliary is one of those ones, depending on what you're doing. Um, so if this was a torpedo build, weapons would be all the way down. Auxiliary would be all the way up. And then I would have my engine power all the way up. Same thing. If it was science auxiliary all the way up and then my engine power is, is high I, as I could get it the rest would go into that. Um, so that's number one. And then on your skill tree, you want to make sure that when you're specking it out that you are putting all the points you can into your impulse expertise. So I'm going full on this here. Um, I will even, in some cases, depending on the build, I will put it uh, extra engine power um, you know, points into my, my power settings. You don't see those here because I'm in sector space, but if I was not, you would see a little bit extra green of bonus power uh, going on top of those. Um, because next to damage, movement is the, the, the next most important thing. Um, if you can't get there, if you can't get there quickly, then your damage isn't going to matter at all. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that before we jumped into this ISA. Let's go ahead and do it and uh, see how this goes. All right, so here we go. So what I generally do, and um, you can work out your own sequence um, depending on you know how you're flying your ship and how you like to, to hit these things, but generally what I'm going to do is for the initial to get up here as quickly as possible is I'm going to hit evasive maneuvers. I'm going to start firing, and as soon as I leave to go over to this area, the first transformer, I'm going to pop the deuterium uh, surplus to get me there. Once I get there, I'm going to hit emergency powered engines so I can refresh emergency power, or I'm sorry, evasive maneuvers so I can get across to the other side. Uh, once I get there and we do that, then most likely I'll use the deuterium surplus to get to the middle of the map. And I guess it'd help if I went full throttle here. So I'm going to reverse so I don't go slamming into the cube because I would otherwise. Moving up on it that fast. I'm going to go ahead and cool down uh, base maneuvers now. Getting into position here, put it in a reverse, and it just stops on a dime. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it's it's worked like that for, for quite a while, so. Keep getting my scatter volley is not on my spam bar. I need to make sure I'm clicking that. And I apologize for my space bar, it is extremely loud. Okay, everything is dead over here. Clicking a base of maneuvers. And we're moving across the map. I think a base of maneuvers is going to run out, and it has. So I've used a firing mode there to get myself out of... out of that slide.
and deuterium surplus to get back to the middle. And a reverse to get out of the slide there. I'm telling you, if you don't if you don't do that reverse to get out of that slide in this ship, I would end up halfway back to the first transformer. Alright, so we're gonna use cannon scatter volley to try and get us turned around here and positioned. Same with beam overload. And there we go. So, I'm sure nowhere near the best run we could do there, um, talking through the uh, the speed and the turn rate stuff. Um, that wasn't the point of this, so um, you can see, again, this is probably the worst handling ship in the entire game, and we're able to pilot that thing through it with no problem. I mean, we went straight over to where we wanted to go. We were able to stop without sliding around, reposition once we got to the middle, turning ourselves around, uh, no issue. So again, in any other ship that's smaller than this and has less inertia, which is most of them, you're gonna find that um, th those things are, are just gonna handle amazing like, um, and you're not gonna have any kind of major issues there. So uh, let's just go through it one more time. Um, the first thing is the duty officer. And if I click the right button here, uh, the duty officer from the Phoenix packs, and that is this guy right here. Uh, he's going to cool down your evasive maneuvers by using emergency powered engines. Again, give yourself a second or two delay in between um, using the cooldown after emergency or after evasive maneuvers ends. Um, that's number one. Number two would be to work your way up, or I guess. Number two should probably be the deuterium surplus because you can you can get that fairly quickly. You do need to get about halfway through the story arc before that mission is available to you. Um, it doesn't pop up or anything like that. You just have to go there. Um, so it's not a part of the chain or anything like that. Um, once you complete it again, that will then be available in your crafting and that's gonna show up in your uh, engineering uh, section here. And it's gonna be right here. So and then you can just craft these guys all day long. Lastly is going to be the competitive engine. And again, there's three different flavors of that, depending on uh, if you're running science or engineering or tactical. And they're not exclusive either. So I could use a Psy one on my tactical character I'm on right now. Um, that would be fine as long as I had science abilities that are going to proc that ability to go off. Um, so they're not exclusive. You don't have to do a particular one. Like I said, I run the tactical version on pretty much all of my, my tunes, regardless of what they're doing for the most part. Um, so you just pick whatever, you know, makes the most sense to you. If you're running, you know, more heals on your ship or, or something like that, then it might make sense to, you know, go with the engineering or the, uh, the, the science variant of that. Okay, well, I think that pretty much covers all of it. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know what to do. Go ahead and throw them down in the comments. If um, you have anything to add to that, I always appreciate that. There's quite a, a few of you in the community that are very knowledgeable. And, you know, th there, there's always multiple different ways to do things, too. And it's a lot of it's kind of how you, you think. And this game has so many layers, it, it allows for that. So, you know, people will look at things just from a different kind of perspective and, and are able to uh, see things that I don't. And I always appreciate that uh, that feedback. Because uh, I certainly don't know anywhere near close to everything about this. Um, I'm still learning stuff every day as well from watching people like Augie and uh, Q Continuum, Timberwolf, those kind of guys, uh, which do a lot more of the, the high-end stuff. So uh, always welcome the comments, guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please go ahead and hit that button. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, uh, have, have a good one and stay safe.